Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. It is a rainy March day here in Johnson City, and I'm really, I'm not bummed at all. I'm just kidding. I'm with Olivia Adkins, an old friend of mine, is on the podcast today. This is super exciting. Carly, we know her. It's going to be fun to get to know her again. She is an influencer, too, so I'm ready to get influenced. Olivia, welcome to the podcast. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, this guy's a little crazy. So, we asked this the first question. I know you're an avid listener. What is your favorite thing about Johnson City? I have been thinking about how to answer this. Um, I would say the culture of Johnson City. I've li- I grew up here and we lived in Knoxville and then Memphis and now back here. And you never realize how like small town and southern Johnson City is until you move away and come back. Yeah. The people are so different here than anywhere else. And I feel like a lot of people associate that with the South, but I feel like it's a little bit more than just like southern hospitality here and that might be because you know i grew up here and i know a lot of people here but i really love the culture of the people here and the food here has gotten so good isn't that cool yes juniper my favorite we like i have some, to shout out juniper we like some juniper <laughs> yes um that's good and just seeing it grow from the five years that i lived away from here and came back you know we came back and visited intermittently but Moving back here, there's still new stuff that I haven't even discovered yet. That, yeah. What did you all just, that new coffee place? Oh, there was, uh, there was a bunch of them. Yeah. But you were talking about. Sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline. And favorite. then I said there's another Airstream or like a pop-up. Mobile. Yeah, mobile coffee bar called Wonderlust, Wonderlust over by yeah. in front of um, Project Barbecue. She's got great coffee over there, too. I know, all the coffee? Yeah. I'll um, try it all. Yeah, we're drinking coffee dis- from Dos Gatos. Dos Gatos, thank you. Um, Brett Dial up here on the, at the moon downtown. Yes, Great. my mom loves that one. Yeah. So this is cool because um, listeners probably don't know, but we have known you since you were younger, like a long time. Um, like. I don't know when we met. You were probably like 10 maybe. Yeah, very young. Yeah. And so your mom, Stephanie, is friends with us. And so, and your dad, or not your dad, but Seth is hysterical. I love your stepdad. He is awesome. Yeah. And so, um yeah, we love your family, and I when you introduced you saw me again, I was like super excited. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so you grew up here, but you don't live in Johnson City right now. Where are no, you living? Jonesboro. Jonesboro, the oldest town in Tennessee. What do you yeah. love about Jonesboro? That there is not a lot of people where we are, and traffic. Not a lot of traffic. Not a lot of traffic. Johnson City traffic. That was the other thing when we moved back that I was not prepared for. Traffic here has gotten a lot different. A lot different than when you grew up, yes, for sure. Yeah. We still, everybody's like, you guys don't have traffic, you know. But oh, I yeah. think we're starting to get there a little bit, especially on State of Franklin in between um, the um, Bank of Tennessee, right there kind of where Fuddruckers used to be, and uh-huh. Chick-fil-A. Yes. It's packed every time at 5 o'clock. Just don't go that way. Or yeah. in front of the mall, same time front of the mall yeah. yeah and that's six lanes over there or something crazy so it should be good but yeah everybody's, everybody's shopping everybody's shopping they're trying to the get the new their, texas road house their, that's right <laughs> that is a, that is something we should talk about the new texas road house so it was down the road like literally a hundredth of a mile away they move it over in front of the mall and it's like it's we have it's packed all the time i don't under we were talking about this the other day because we had just gone to chicken salad chick yep and my husband and I were sitting in the parking lot, and we were like, this place has been open for over a month now, and it's lunchtime in the middle of the week. And you have to get a reservation. <laughs> it's nuts. I, I they, they had some marketing secret that nobody else knew about. Yeah. I don't know what it was. I don't know either. Maybe they Caitlin were like, maybe traffic. they shut the old one down before. No, I think they kept it going. I don't know. But maybe they're like, hey, this is the new and improved Texas Roadhouse. You haven't had steak like this before. Well, if you've ever been to like a new restaurant versus like an older one, mm-hmm. it's like 
the fryer oil and the grill is fresh. You know, it hasn't like gotten seasoned, all, which yeah. is not as good. Typically. I think it's better. Oh well, see, I had a friend. We had a, when we got the new Waffle House in town. He was like, "Oh, you got to wait at least three or four months till they season the grill before you go over there." Oh, okay. So I don't know. Maybe you like. I always think it tastes better like right after. It's fresh. You know, I used to work at Barberitos in college. I remember this. And every time we changed the fryer oil, people would rave about how much better the chips were. Now I could get along on that one, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Not the steaks necessarily, but yeah. What's the Anything worst fried. is when you go to like some place and you get fries or chips and they taste like fish or something because they fried something bad in the same oil. Yeah, so. no. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about you a little bit more because that's what the podcast today is about. Okay. So you grew up here. You got married when? Mm -hmm. Who'd you uh, marry? What's his name? His name is Caleb. Caleb. We, let me think. Okay, I'm he guessing. got into LMU. Okay. In 2018. So we moved to Knoxville in December of 2018. Okay. And then, let me think. It's hard to rehat. I mean, and what did he go to school to do? Um, he's in medical school. Okay. So we moved there in 2018. He did a master's to MD or a master's to DO program. So he got his master's while he was getting, getting into his medical DO. school. Getting his DO, gotcha. Um, and so we got married in 2020, in July of 2020. So we lived there for two years and then got married and we lived in Knoxville a total of three years. Yeah. And then DO programs, osteopathic medicine, they are not affiliated with one specific hospital or program. Like ETSU is with John City Medical Center. Yeah. They have a million rotation sites. So we got put in Memphis. You get like into this draft if you will yeah. and match with the rotation right site. they were just had match day here at Quillen. yes yeah. so but this is that was like residency match this right. is like medical school rotation site match so it's really funny how like god works in the background because we actually got more matched with fort smith arkansas first which is in the literal middle of nowhere it would be like going to johnson county like there you and some chickens are in the middle of Arkansas. yeah yeah so we had found a house because at that time we had two children we found a house we did a facetime walkthrough tour we were like ready to like put the money down on it and we got a message from we really wanted memphis memphis was our number one originally but we had gotten fort smith we'd made our peace with it we found a house and then he had a colleague message him because you're allowed to switch. And he said, hey, I got Memphis. Would you be willing to switch with me? Because I really want to go to Fort Smith. Yes. And I don't remember the <laughs> You guys reason. are chuckling like. Yeah, we're like, all right. Yeah. I uh, think he just really didn't want to live in Memphis. Yeah. <laughs> Let's gotcha. be honest. Right. Um, so we ended up switching. And it was great because my uh, aunt and uncle lived there. So we cherished our time there. Yeah. We were ready to leave after yeah. a year. You know, we got to experience that area it was great um and then we decided to move back here so that's great cool. year yeah now how many children do you have three three Just how old are they five to seven weeks seven weeks yeah. congratulations thanks he's brand new still got the the new smell the new wrapper smell on him yeah i love <laughs> i love little babies our church we have babies all the time that's yeah. just awesome that's awesome Okay, so he's a do he's on a rotation now though still right yes, he's in dc so he's also in the navy so he, yeah, he's, we just don't like to sit still. I don't know. When do you guys see each other? Cause like, like it, never. never. Cause I was just at the beach before he left and yeah. But I mean, tis the life of a surgeon. When yeah. He's done, Is that what so, he's wanting to do? Yeah. Surgery? Yeah. He wants to do trauma surgery. Oh, and be in the Navy. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Tom, thanks for his service and all that stuff. Oh, well. So when he's not around, you're doing something else. You're. You're Somewhere. bored and you get on your phone and you make yourself famous. Is that what I'm hearing? Fame. <laughs> I wouldn't consider myself. Marissa famous. puts you down as local influencer. So yes. you're an influencer. Yes. Tell us, tell our listeners. I mean, most people probably know, but if you don't know what an influencer is, what is that? Um, so I actually don't like the term influencer for me per se, because I. More like superstar. Is that better? Or uh, I mean, like, I'll take that too. Hi. But I feel like influencer is more like, you know, the typical, like, I feel like that's more associated with like the TikTok people. Okay. Like the TikTok famous people. That's fair. Um, I originally started as a blogger. So I like the. I think of myself more as like a fashion blogger than fashion. An okay, I was going to ask you, what are you blogging about? Mostly fashion and travel. Okay. So, 
I feel like there's like three terms. There's like content creator, mm -hmm. influencer, and I feel like blogger's not really a term anymore, but I like to associate myself with that term. I'm still a blogger. I'm still like doing it. It's coming back. I know. Well, I feel like influencer gets a bad rap to people. Yeah. Like if you tell somebody who's not heavy in social media that you're an influencer, I feel like that has like a negative connotation sometimes. Could. Yeah. Could. Or somebody's like, wow, she's an influencer. You know, like. It but I never lead with that. Like if it comes right. up in conversation, I mean, normally just like, I work in like social media. Are there different layers, like levels of influencer? Like how many followers you have makes you more credible, I mean, there's less credible? people who have tried to like come out and set standards for things. But I feel like it's such like a new thing still. Yeah. There's not really industry standards, but they say like a micro influencer is like, less than 20,000. Okay. And then a macro is like, I think they have it labeled as like more than a hundred thousand. Okay. And then if you're in between there, I think nano is it? Maybe I have that backwards. I don't know. We don't, I feel like if you're in the industry, we don't really like pay attention to that because right. there's people who could have 20,000 followers and have like a super heavy influence on a specific group of people. And then there's people who have like a million followers and maybe they bought a million followers and you know oh you right know. yeah they're yeah. all like uh in the philippines Fake, yeah. or china or yeah, something bots all, yeah bots yeah ai and all the Could crazy be. Yeah. yes yes so tell us about how you started this blog so my husband and i met in college at etsu mm -hmm. we were both pre-med we both worked at the hospital together um and i got pregnant with our first son in 2017 i had him in 2018 awesome and i was like you know what I'm going to take a year off to try to like figure out, cause we can't both be in medical school and have a kid. Like I had always wanted to be a mom and knew that was important to me to like be there for him. Right. So I took a year off and, uh, while he continued his path to medical school and I followed like a few influencers and this is back in 2017. So there were like the classic bloggers that we mentioned before, but there was not, there's no TikTok. There was no Instagram stories. There was no Instagram reels. There was just Instagram I mean, that's posts. Just crazy. I know. It's weird to think about. Yeah. Cause I mean, they didn't even have Facebook when I was in college, Olivia. Oh, <laughs> really? It was just starting to come out. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're telling your viewers how old you are. That's all right. I'm, yeah, I'm seasoned. You're seasoned. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Um, so I was telling him all the time about all these, influencers and you know people i followed their blogs to get them in my email yeah. and he was like well why don't you do that you love clothes you spend way too much money on them like <laughs> why don't you do that <laughs> hint, hint. let's get a little return on that and investment that, well but that was never i mean you i don't think people really made a ton of money off of right. it back then so he was like why don't you do that with your free time because i was just working at the hospital and you know i was up all night because i was pregnant and you know just bored he's like why don't you do that so i Looked into it briefly, and I decided to just start, like, posting outfits. And so I did. And then a few years later, I was like, you know what? I don't think I want to go back to medical school, especially after, like, watching him go through COVID, working at – he worked at UT Medical Center all throughout COVID in their literal COVID tip they set up in the parking lot. And I was like, you know what? Not for me. I'm good <laughs> in my what? house I instead of yeah, COVID tip. I enjoy tip. what I've kind of – created at that point um and i was able to support our family a little bit from that so i decided to take that and run with it all right so break it down for me because i'm a dude I'm a you put on clothes you take a picture of it or you do a story or a reel or something like that and people follow that they're like yeah, that's what at, my husband that's literally mitch like, and i are just like scratching our heads because i mean i'd put on the same thing every day basically khaki pants and a shirt yeah. pretty much and people would be like yeah there's khaki pants guy again you know he's not going to get any followers there is such a space for men though too because there are like All right, I'm no in. <laughs> men there are no men's fashion bloggers there aren't there all are, right let's do it mitch people i have brands literally beg me to feature caleb and content they're like please we need a male to wear our clothes if you can tell me and let's talk like, offline about how we can monetize this too you can and be, it helps. you can be the stand in for there you the, go. the male yes. content yes. like the little like women it. stuff that's what i'm wearing my lulu pants oh yeah time. the yeah. commission is that the ABCs. abc's yeah that's what caleb likes y'all are both tall so i knew that they're non yeah that's all i got i got rid of all my cotton pants which is crazy <laughs> to think about all right so you took a bunch of you do a reel you tag, I guess, the brand. Like, tell me how it works, because I want to so, know. So, 
there, I, I think every, the other unique thing about this is everyone structures their business differently. Mm -hmm. um, and there really are pretty much endless ways to make money in the social media influencer content creator yeah. world. Um, so I use like to know it and Amazon. So those are how you make commissionable links. So like say Carly gets on my page and she's mm -hmm. like, I love this outfit. She probably is on there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to buy it. And then I make literally a very small, usually it's less than 10% commission off of whatever she buys. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I mean, I'm saying she buy, probably follows you already because she's on. Oh, she does. I see her stuff too. Cause yeah. she does the vintage yeah. stuff too. She was doing that for a while, but yeah. it didn't take off. Yeah, so maybe she'll get back into it. A lot of people, I see a lot of people on TikTok do that. Yeah. Reworking vintage stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's another way a lot of people do. I've, this is my favorite thing to watch on TikTok. People go to thrift stores. They find like these quilted kind of, kind of like what I have on, but like a quilt, like a grant, like Meemaw's quilt that right. she had on right. the bed. And they rework it into like different things and sell it on like Poshmark, Facebook Marketplace. That's crazy. It's so wild. like somebody out there is wearing Meemaw's. Blanket. Well, cool. But it looks way cooler than it, looks it did. Way cooler on... because they put a collar on it. And yeah, it no, they cool. just like piece all these things together. I'm like, in my head, I could do it, but I'm not that crafty. Gotcha. Like, I can style the outfit. I'm not right. that crafty at like creating. So you'll the... like meet up or you'll like connect with the quilt, the people who are doing it. Yeah. And then they've got, they're selling multiples on Amazon or what was the other site you said? Like to know it. Like to know it. And then. You'll get a brand. You'll get a little cut of their deal. Yeah, you, because if you've you got a, you're telling about things. it and linking it. Okay. Yeah. So, like to know it is like a third party. They've really benefited from the influencer space. So they came out. I want to say 2011. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it was in the early days of influencing. Okay. And what they did is they made this platform where influencers can link things, but brands can communicate to influencers oh, gotcha. through there. Yeah. Like they're so, a connector. Like Target. So they go to these brands and they're like, hey, if you pay us a certain amount and come on our website, influencers will link through your Target, whatever. And when people make a purchase, the influencers are promoting like Target or whatever. They make money and you all make money off selling your goods. So they've really changed the game, name of the game in that whole sense because they're one of, I think they're the biggest like affiliate marketing platform other than Amazon at this point. And they do multiple retailers, not just Amazon. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and then there's like an algorithm and different things you need to keep an eye on all the oh, time. Oh, gosh. How are you balancing all that out? Um, the analytical side of things is actually pretty interesting because it changes weekly, like maybe even daily. How do you, do you, how do you keep up with all that? I mean, like, and they're because, and, and then you're kind of like, why are they doing it? Yeah. Like, they just want to keep. Because they want to cater to knowing you and like the AI, it's kind of creepy how they do it, honestly, if you really think about it, especially Facebook. Like Meta is like cr scary. Cr have you like ever had a conversation with someone and you pick up your phone and what you were talking about is like on your oh, Facebook ad? I know our phone's listening. It's listening right yeah. now. I'm probably going to get some quilted jacket <laughs> ad here as soon as we get off of it. <laughs> no, but that's how they, they're constantly like updating the algorithm based off like world events, mm -hmm. seasons, what people are interacting with. Like when they watch reels, I started seeing people on YouTube, like flocking to YouTube because they wanted more video content. So that's why they brought reels over. And then TikTok, of course, was like a big push in that too because they were trying to compete with Instagram. For a little while until it gets shut down maybe. What do you I, think? Is it going to get shut down? This is like probably the fifth time that I've heard that it's gone through like the first stage of getting the bill passed. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think the next step is the big kicker if it actually yeah, will, but Montana, Senate, it's got to go through the Congress or something. And then, yeah. And then the president will sign off on it. He said he would, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. I think it, they would sell to somebody else before, like, cause that's the whole contingency on it. I think is that oh. they want them, the U S government wants them to sell to a different company. I don't know. If so Elon will happen. probably wind up buying it. But I'm pretty sure it was Montana or some Midwest state that just passed a law for if you're under 14, you're not allowed to have social media at all. I like that. I do too. I'm, the, And that's weird coming from somebody who works in social media, right. but I think I see both sides of like how great it can be, but also how damaging it can mm -hmm. be to people. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, my kids will not have social media for a very long time. 
I'll, I'll be buying your clothes and t- telling you what you need to wear. You don't need to worry about it yeah. for a while. Yeah. So you're so. over 16, maybe. That's interesting. Yeah, I think the whole social media deal got good and bad, right? Yeah. It's like anything. You can there you can take it too far and be addicted to it, or you can kind of leave it and say, okay. But, yeah, yeah I think it all boils down to your heart. Um, right. But, yeah, it's it's. But you got to worry weird. about other people, too. You do have to worry about all the weird And there are some crazy people. There are a lot of Trust crazy me. people out there. If there you're are... crazy and you're listening right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Come talk to me. We'll try and straighten you out. Yeah. <laughs> There's a better way to go. There's a better way to go. His name's Jesus. Um, so how long have you been doing this now? In April, it will be six years. Okay. And then, so how did, have you, like, did you have an influencer influence you to kind of help mentor you? How'd you get going? No, I really wanted to be different uh-huh. than what was already out there. So I made a point not to try to rely on sure. someone else. Yeah. Um, and my first child did not sleep at all. So it was great timing for me to research things while he was awake. And that's what I did, honestly. Like I had people come to me and they like, kind of like want mentorship from me. And I'm like, honestly, I, they're like, what did you do? Like, did you take some course? Just have a baby. I was, yeah, literally (laughs) just be up all night and you can research whatever and watch YouTube videos. I remember when he was like, four or five months old, I was like, okay, you've got to start sleeping through the night. Like you're at the stage where it's like, it's time, buddy. Mm -hmm. And I was really wanting to build my own website. Um, you know, my husband, we had just moved. My husband was in medical school. I was not making money from blogging. I could not afford to like buy a website. So I was like, I'm gonna learn how to code. So I did. I watched YouTube videos every night and I coded my entire website. (laughs) Oh, you're on. And I built the whole thing. Yeah. How crazy. I can't change things sometimes. I still have to like look it up, but I'm familiar enough with it that I can like do what I need to do. That's cool. Yeah. Where'd you get that kind of like, I'm going to knock it out. Yeah. I mean, I can figure this out spirit. Uh, Well, Seth also helped because he, you know, built websites and stuff. Yeah. But, um, I just, if there's a will, there's a way, and I couldn't afford to do it, and there was no other way to, I couldn't pay someone to do it. So yeah. I was like, I'll just look it up. So you just hustle. It can't be that hard, I right? Yeah. Well, right? that was, it ended up being harder than I thought it was. Coding is very different. Yeah. That's, and you're like, uh, Seth, I'm in a little too deep. Uh, yeah. He helped out a little bit. Yeah. Pulling the, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I love it. Um, so let's say somebody's listening now, besides having a baby, what are some other tips that they could do to get, get going? <laughs> Um, I would say people ask me all the time, if I were to go back to square one and start over, what would I do in the beginning or what would I do differently? Um, and I think figuring it out on your own, you know, I think it's good to have like advice from people, but I think figuring out on your own, um, kind of allows you to, like I said, develop like your own sense of style and what you want to really do and succeed at, but also learning all these things. So you know, if something goes wrong on my website, I don't have to be like, hey, I need to pay you $100 to help me like fix this or every time. Yeah, you're you know, not beholden goes, to some right, web to developer guy that he's going to, yeah, he's got your website held, you know, captive and oh, oh gosh, you need help. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. About that. So you're in control of that. Yes. Um, and I think there's so many people who do the same thing that it's beneficial if you just try to start what you're most interested in and what you're already good at and what you already know. And then, like I said, learn as you go different things rather than just taking a course and then you have all this information and you're like, where do I even start? Yeah. If you just start. Just start. Just start. That's yeah. probably the biggest piece like of Like Jerry advice. Seinfeld, just write one joke a day. Oh just my gosh. do something every day. My husband know? loves Seinfeld. Oh, it's <laughs> it's so best. corny. I can't. <laughs> I can't Christian and I started watching it again. It is the best. Like, it's just awesome. Um, all right, so you're six years in. What What's... What are you working on big right now? Um, I have some secrets that I'm <laughs> not going to share. Olivia, come on. Uh, I, there's so many different routes that you can take with it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of people who go the podcast route, which I've tried. Yeah. I might pick that We're up doing again. It. Yeah. We'll see. Um, I really want to get back into YouTube. That's okay. probably like my next big project. Um, I just don't have the time here. and You're I'm on the tube right now. We're what? on the YouTube right now. I mean, I do shorts, which is the same thing as reels. Um, but the long form video, like I said, the editing part of everything is just 
horrible. You need a, you need a Mitch McGarry with me. I do. Maypop, Maypop Media. Maypop that's Media. That's exactly what call, I need. Call Mitch McGarry at Maypop Media. That's a lot of M's. <laughs> Mitch McGarry and Marissa and at Maypop Marissa. Media. <laughs> My goodness. Hopefully the Google's picking that up and going to send business to Mitch and Marissa at Maypop yeah, Media. Yeah, seriously. And yeah. maybe I will do that too. But I feel like San Diego will be... You know, people will want to. When do you guys have to move to San Diego? May 22nd is our one-way ticket out of here. That's my birthday. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Awesome. I'll be sure to text you happy birthday happy from the plane. See you. We're leaving. We'll be back. You know, we have family here. Both yeah. our families You'll live be here. So. I love it. Yeah. So what do you see in the next six years? Like, the technology is changing, right? Right. All the time. So what do you anticipate maybe some of the trends looking like? We talked about AI here. What do you think that, what do you think is going to change in the next? So six? podcasts, obviously, everyone's starting a podcast. That's the other thing where I'm like, do I really want to pick it back up? Because that's what everyone's doing. Everybody's saying. doing it. Yeah. And I think a lot more long form video. Okay. Um, so like TikTok's rolled out. First they started one minute, three minutes, 10 minutes. They're trying to compete with YouTube. Um, but I'm like, I don't want to put all my eggs in the TikTok mm-hmm. basket mm-hmm. before we see what happens with the government shutting it down potentially? What it's doing. Yeah. I think a lot of people will try to just do something completely different and new. I don't even know what that would be. Um, but I see a lot of influencers also establishing like their own brands, mm-hmm. whether that's hair, clothes. What else have I seen? Like oh. furniture, like Magnolia Home stuff. I oh, mean, like, yeah. yeah. They've got their home and TV show now. Like they have their oh, own she's a channel. TV. There's Magno- the Magnolia Channel. Oh. Yeah, they're like, hey, that. we're just going to do it all. I don't watch too much TV. Yeah. I have to just, go to bed early just while stuff. my kids are asleep. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, I get zero sleep. My aura ring this morning, um, my newborn had a tough night last night, and this morning it was like, take some rest today. I was like, yeah, okay, do you provide babysitting services right. for that? Right, Aura, do you see these kids around here? I know. They need an option for it. new mom. They have pregnancy, but they don't have, like, new mom. Because it was like, why are you waking up so much? Like, because I have a child. That's hilarious. Um, all right, Johnson City. Let's get back yes. to some of your favorite spots in Johnson City. You've grown up here. What yes. are some of your Firehouse. Like, fire, so, like, let's do food. Yeah. So, okay. Firehouse. Firehouse. Did you ever work at the Firehouse? I did. My buddy called it the Fired House because the fire. he got fired. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. That yeah, no, but we love Tom and Donna. And oh, yeah, they're great. Justin is now running it. It's great. I did their catering uh, oh, okay, for cool. a summer at the wedding. Some best of the best part, barbecue in town. Yeah, well, best part after the wedding, you all, get all the leftovers. All the leftover food. I ate more. My mom used to say I would come home, like, reeking of barbecue. It would just smell like barbecue. I'd be like, come here. I want to smell barbecue. So Firehouse, Cootie Brown's, classic. Cootie Brown's, so good. Can't beat it. Oh, my Crazy gosh. good menu. I mean, yes. like. All over the place. Pizza, salads. Barbecue. The Taco Rita. Yep. There's nothing like it. Yep. Um, Black Olive. Black Olive is good. I really like it. Their brunch. Have you gone to their brunch? We have, down right here? downtown. Yeah. So good. And the other one we ate brunch at, I think. No. No, just downtown we've been at for brunch. Yeah. That's delicious. I think downtown and Elizabeth and have brunch. Brunch. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else? A juniper, obviously. Juniper's good. A juniper. Yep. I mean, they are just really good at what they do yeah it's it's pretty good it's it's not cheap so we don't go all the time but <laughs> you need to find a way to like do like business meetings there so you can ride it off. that's right yeah well we do when we do go we like we typically see somebody and we talk hey do you need to buy a house and <laughs> there you go so um what other food pals every time we moved away oh my goodness we get, what's we your favorite pals? pals menu item the fries. Do you get them extra salt oh. seasoning? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so good. And cheddar ounce with, with seasoned fries salt. With fries seasoning, yeah. yes. Okay, you know the hack. Okay. Then there's uh, grill salt you can get, which is what they put on their burger. Try those, too. That's just a little different twist, but it's good. Oh, okay. So you can get cheddar rounds with grill salt, Grill salt. Good. Okay, yeah. I'll try that. Yeah. And their shakes are good. Yeah. Anything for pals. Their tea. I didn't know how much. I was in Europe for almost two weeks this summer. Eat. They don't have sweet tea. No, either. and that's not a thing. It's not a thing there. And all I wanted, I was pregnant when I was there. All I wanted was a sweet tea. I tried to make my own, and they asked for ice. They bring you hot tea. And when Carly was pregnant, biscuits and gravy from Pals was her biscuits, thing. She was like, yes. I would love to have some biscuits and gravy from Pals. I was like, yes, ma'am. We'll go get them. So, yeah, Pals is fantastic. I think you could drop a Pals in the middle of anywhere, and it's going to crush They you. need to put one in Knoxville. Or, 
or Paris or somewhere, you know? Like, yeah, you could I just, mean, yeah. yeah. So yeah, there, I asked one guy, I said, are you guys going to franchise ever? And he was like, no, we're just going to stay regionally here. And I was like, oh, okay. Because I think they could go. They could. They, they could would, go na- nationwide they for would sure. They wear it out. Yeah, everybody who comes here is like, what's the deal with that big hot dog and hamburger place? And I'm like, it's phenomenal. That's the deal. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. What are some of your things you do with your kids when you're out and about? Um, you guys park fossil. people? Oh, yeah. We love the new downtown park because yeah. turf. Mm-hmm. So oh, they yeah. Can get the functional in the playground. Dirt without yeah. getting dirty. Mm-hmm. Um, we love that park. They really like the blue and white park beside the fire station, Kiwanis. Mm-hmm. I think that's Kiwanis. Um, and then we have one in our neighborhood too, so we go to that one pretty often. But that's they cool. also love the Gray Fossil slash yeah. hands on museum. Yeah. Pretty cool. And wetlands. My little boy has been asking to go to wetlands. You're like, it's Every a time cold. it's a warm day. He's like, it's warm enough for wetlands. I'm like, but they're not open yet. Uh, it's not quite warm He would warm totally enough. go. We were at the beach last week, and the water's like 40 degrees, and their like, lips are blue, but they're like playing in it. They don't care. I wonder what age it is that you're like, oh, this that's cold. cold. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's probably like. I'm like, but are you freezing? 12, maybe 10-ish. You're kind of like, this is too cold. I'm yeah. not getting in that. No, but when they, you're a little kid, you're like. It's water. Let's go. Yeah. They they did not care. They were like shivering, lips blue, having the best time. Like, okay. And it's good for them now because yeah. polar plunges are a big Right. Thing. That's they, they that's trendy. Kids probably started that trend. Let's be honest. <laughs> probably did. Some dad probably got in and was like, wait a second. Wow. I feel like a kid again. Yeah. This is great. You guys need to be doing this. Do you do this? No. no. Not yet. I did fall in my pool the other day and <laughs> uh, did a polar plunge. It was 40 degrees. And I was like. Here we go. I just felt like I was cleaning it and I looked over because the dogs were doing something in the yard and I thought they might be getting out or something. And I look and I stepped on the edge and boom, oh. I'd just gotten ready and I had my phone and while I was just, and, but I was in and I was out in like 13 point two seconds. your phone was okay? It was fine. Oh. Yeah. There, okay. It's like a little waterproof. It was in my pocket and I got out and I ran up on my back deck and then I was like, I can't strip here. So I went into the garage and I was just laughing at myself the whole time. It was funny. Was anybody luckily, home? No, luckily Carly wasn't home or she would have just been hee-hawing at me. We could have put you on TikTok. That would have been, you would have watched this guy run faster than he's ever run before because he was freezing. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so funny. It felt like a wet dog. It was bad. Um, so date night for you guys. What are you going to do besides go to Juniper? That's literally what we've done the past two days. Just go Juniper. We're going to, we Juniper. to Juniper. All right, Juniper. Juniper's closed, so you got to go somewhere else. Oh, I don't know. It's a know Monday. They aren't a open Monday? on Mondays. Yeah. Uh, I don't, my husband does not get time off. <laughs> I would be like, okay. Never mind. You guys don't he get a day He would be like, night. I'm going to sleep. Yeah. That's what he would do. He's like, I just go to sleep, please. I'm so tired. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, what would we do? If, you were we, lit- if it was summer, we would probably go like hiking or yeah. do something like that. You guys like to trail outside. it at all? No, you know, we haven't done that because neither of us own a bike. Oh, okay. Well, you can walk it. It's it's walkable. <laughs> I feel like, doesn't it go all the way to Elizabeth? There is something called walking. You yeah. don't have to go a whole way. You can just go down. And we turn live around. really close to Persimmon Ridge, so we walk. You walk back. Persimmon Ridge. Yeah. That's a good loop. Yeah, and it is. And they've got those trails in the and they go in the woods too, off behind the wetlands. It's yeah. nice. <laughs> That's why every time we walk it, my son's like, "Let's go to let's go to wetlands," <laughs> and you're like, "No, buddy, it's freezing." That's funny. Okay. What did I forget to ask you that you're like, I really want to talk about this, Colin. Anything? Um, I don't know. Let me think. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think anything. Okay. How do I, how do people who are listening who like this Olivia lady, I want to follow her. I want to figure out what she's doing on the (laughs) net. So how do how do they find you? I am at on everything, literally everything. Olivia Maybell. Olivia Maybell. Yes. Where'd that come from? Um, that's my full maiden name, Olivia. A lot of people think my middle name is Maybell. Yeah, like cause that makes sense. We live in the South, and yep. that just sounds right. But it's actually my first name, Olivia. Middle name May. My maiden name, Bell. Bell. Gotcha. I didn't want to change it because I like the southern like sound. So Todd and Shelly, your your yeah, that's my, your aunt and uncle. Todd is my mom's brother. Ah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, they're so sweet. Yes, they lived here for a bit, but they're back in Memphis. Yep, back in Memphis, he's doing teeth stuff down there. Mm-hmm. Both my uncles are dentists, actually. Really? Yes. It must be in the in the genes. I know, very random. Was it like a grandfather or somebody nope. a dentist? No. <laughs> nope, they just like they teeth, just I guess. Okay, so Olivia Maybell. 
on Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, Pinterest, Pinterest, Facebook, Facebook, YouTube, YouTube all website. of it. You got a website too. Yep. Okay. Twitter. How can they uh, help you get to uh, San Diego? Like what? What can they, can they get on there and order stuff and that helps fund that oh, project yeah. and helps pay for your plane ticket? Well, the U.S. Navy, thankfully, funds most of that project. You're welcome. <laughs> so thank you. Shout out to the U.S. Navy. <laughs> Thanks that. all taxpayers out there in well, the U.S. Navy. Well, we have Navy. to ship my car. I think they don't cover the car. So, but. Mitch, you want to do a road trip? We can just drive a car out to San Diego and back. You know, it sounds really fun until you have three kids that you're doing it with. And well, you're like, you know what? Mitch would be like, I got Colin. He's like one kid. It's like three kids. So. We really wanted. <laughs> we could get a banana and a drive through if we could find a place. That'll be our goal. <laughs> and see the world's biggest ball of string on the way or something. Biggest ball of string. I've yeah. never heard of that. The, we really wanted to do like an RV trip mm -hmm. um, to make it out there. But I think the logistics of that are not going to. A little crazy. Yeah. Uh, cause it's, I think a little over, I think it's 28 hours. If you drive it straight through. No, thank you. Yeah. But we would take the scenic route cause my husband really wants to go to Yellowstone on the way. So he is going to drive the U-Haul. He really wants to do that. And I was like, have at it. I will, I will meet be, you there, bro. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm like, I will fly with our children. You yeah. enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. With a seven week old, that that's going to be. With U -Hauls, is not good so i'm not looking forward to a phone call from him about that but yeah don't call me just get there. Said, when you get there out. let, then let call me, me that's right <laughs> i'll see you when you pull that's in the right. driveway <laughs> i love it i love it well we wish you the best thank you for coming on the podcast i'm sure yes. our lo listeners love the conversation please stay in touch when you come back say I hi will. carly would love to see you again i'm sure yes so, yeah it was fun getting to know you um Thank you guys for um, being listeners. We're super excited that you're listening to our podcast. You're learning about wonderful people like Olivia and Caleb and what they're doing in their lives. Till next time, I'm Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group. If you want to move here or move anywhere in the world, I should have gotten in touch with you before you moved. To, you're moving to San Diego. I can help you connect with great agents all over the place. We are part of the Place Network, and we've got tons of great agents all over the country. And if you want to build wealth through real estate, we do that too. So when you get start really killing it and you want to buy a bunch of rental properties and have us manage them, we can do that for you, Olivia. So if you want to do that too, if you're a listener, we'd love to help you. So thanks so much. Have a great spring. And until next time, talk to you soon.